back to my channel. If you're new, welcome. My name is Zoe, but most people know me as ZA Reptiles, and today we're going to be discussing 10 reptiles that don't need quite as much space as some other ones. So these are reptiles that if you are living in an apartment or still at home with your parents, these might be ideal pet reptiles or amphibians for you. Now, when I say not quite as much space, I am talking up to 40 gallons. It is pretty easy to find a 40 gallon breeder tank. So there's really no excuse to be keeping animals in lesser if you can give them more, but we're just talking up to 40 gallon breeders. Like 40 gallon breeders is like going above and beyond for these animals or hitting the new typical requirements. So this isn't a video to say, hey, these are animals you can keep in a 10 gallon tank we are discussing up to 40 gallons because it is pretty easy to find a 40 gallon breeder tank. Before we get into the list, I do just want to note, this is not a care guide. This is just giving you kind of some ideas, a rundown of some animals that do really well in smaller spaces as opposed to needing something humongous. Especially because I do have some animals on this list that I have not personally owned. And normally I don't talk about animals that I haven't owned. So I'm not giving you care tips, I am just kind of giving you a rundown of what to expect for an enclosure size. So if any of these pique your interest, you can then go forward and do more research and really make a game plan and figure out what it is you need. So number one on the list is a Kenyan sand boa. This is Tootsie, my Kenyan sand boa. She is currently in an exoterra that is, I believe, 24 by 18 by 12. I'll double check that and put it on the screen. But you can see it's this one right here. And she can still fully stretch out and it. it is still a good size for her. And I think it will stay a good size for her. I don't think I'm gonna have to go up much more than that. So this is one that if she's a size or smaller, so talking males, something like a 20 gallon long or a 20 tall turned on its side and converted would be a good fit. I think that's about what that one is. I think it's about what would be a 20 gallon tall turned on its side. Now for a very large female, I would probably go 30 to 40 gallons. But for a snake like Tootsie here or a male, a small male, 20 gallons would be totally fine. Next on the list is a hognose snake. This is Penelope, my western hognose. I also have a tricolored hognose rumple snake skin. And so Penelope here is about the same size as Tootsie, so she's in the same size enclosure. That's her enclosure up there. And Rumble's a bit smaller, so he's in a smaller sized enclosure. I think his is about, I think his is 18 by 18 by 12. But I will double check that, or 18 by 12 by 12. Again, I will put it on the screen. So with hog noses, it's pretty much the same thing that I just told you guys with Kenyan sand boas. The females get bigger, the males stay smaller. Penelope here is definitely still growing, so is Tootsie, so they might need to go up to the next size. I'm thinking three by two by 18, but in the meantime, these enclosures are fitting them perfectly. So again, we're talking 20 to 30 gallons, possibly up to 40 if you have a big female, maybe more. If you have a really big female, three by two. Next up are African fat-tailed geckos. So this is one of my normal African fat-tailed geckos, UA. And this is an animal that I would keep in a 40 gallon or a 36 by 18 exoterra. UA lives in a three by two by 12. So it just has a little more depth than a 40 gallon tank would, but a 40 gallon tank would work really well for a fat-tailed gecko. Next up we're going arboreal with gargoyle geckos. This is Tula, my gargoyle gecko. Now, what you normally see for arboreal geckos is like a 20 gallon long turn sideways or an 18 by 18 by 24 or 24 by 24. These are all common things I hear nowadays with arboreal geckos. Personally, I prefer something a little bit bigger. So she's in a two by 36. So it's two foot long, 18 inches deep, and 36 inches tall. I really wanted to give more height. I do have my crested geckos in the 20 gallon longs turned sideways. And I just, I'm starting to feel like it's not wide enough, it's not deep enough, and it's not tall enough. So I wanted something to give much more room for climbing, jumping, exploring, hence the two by 36. Now this comes out to be about 67 gallons. However, if you were able to take a 40 gallon breeder tank and turn it on its side, it would be pretty similar. It would still be double what you're getting from a 20 gallon tank turned sideways. The only downside with that method is you are not able to provide overhead heating or UVB. 
where the enclosure that I have, it does have a screen top, which means that I can provide both of those. Next up on the list, we're going to jump over to amphibians for a second, and we have the tiger salamander. Now, I don't have a tiger salamander to show you, but they are awesome. I absolutely love them. It can be hard to find them captive bred. Typically, they are wild caught, so if you're going to go with tiger salamander, try to find one that's captive bred. But they are a nice, hardy salamander that would totally do well in a 40-gallon breeder setup. Also, be sure to check your state laws because tiger salamanders are native to the U.S. There are some states where you won't be able to own them. For example, in my state, New York, there is a tiger salamander that is native to New York, so I cannot own that tiger salamander, so I have to make sure I get a different type of tiger salamander. Going back over to our terrestrial geckos, we have leopard geckos. Now this one's a very common pet, but seriously, they're an awesome pet. So just like the fat-tailed geckos, very similar care, we're gonna go up to a 40-gallon breeder tank. That is the new standard. It fits perfectly, it gives them room to move around, climbing opportunities, a good gradient for heat and humidity. Now just like the fat tails, my leopard gecko is in a 36 by 24 by 18. So slightly more depth than a 40 gallon, but a 40 gallon still works great. Going arboreal again, you guys probably figured I was going to say a crested gecko at some point. We talked about the gargoyle geckos, so we touched on crested geckos. Basically the same thing I said for gargoyle geckos applies to the crested geckos. Now I can't pull out one of my crested geckos for you because during the daytime they hide really really well to the point that I can't get them. So I'm hoping when they move into their new enclosures that are the same as Tula's that I will be able to access them more frequently to be able to bring them out a little easier. They've gotten pretty good at making their own hiding spaces in the backgrounds. But again, 40 gallon breeder, turned sideways, or you have a 24 by 18 by 36, which I'm pretty sure Reptazoo has these. Mine's white and theirs are black, but same size and a lot of keepers like black enclosures. So you can totally check them out to get those. This isn't sponsored at all. I'm just saying that's where I have seen them easily accessible. All right, we've got three more. While we're on the topic of arboreal geckos, we'll hit the last arboreal gecko, and that is the day gecko. So this is another one that you're not gonna be really handling. This is more just for looking, but they are absolutely gorgeous. So they make a great display animal. Now, depending on which type of day gecko you get, they can be fairly small, or they can be fairly decently sized. If you're looking at the smaller day geckos, you're looking at about 20 gallons or a 12 by 12 by 18, 12 by 12 by 20, something along those lines. A giant day gecko is going to need quite a bit more space. So if you're trying to save on space, I would go for one of the smaller day gecko species. But either way, they're all very beautiful and you can't go wrong with whatever you choose. Let's jump over to the other amphibian I have on the list and that is a tomato frog. So tomato frogs are terrestrial frogs that can look nice and red and round like a tomato. They're very awesome. I'm in the market for one. I'm keeping my eye out for one. I'd love to add one to my team of education animals, but tomato frogs are super awesome. The females can get pretty decently sized, so I would go for probably about a 30 to 40 gallon for those, but if you're getting a smaller one, 20 to 30 gallons maybe, something like this up here that I have the two small snakes in, would be awesome. And last on the list is a reptile I haven't worked with yet, but I would really love to. I almost brought one home from an expo way back in college. I have regrets because now they're more expensive than they were, but that is the cave gecko. So cave geckos look super awesome. They're black with this bright yellowish gold striping. They just, they look so, so cool. So again, very similar to our other terrestrial geckos like the fat tail gecko and the leopard gecko. You're looking at about 30 to 40 gallons. I would go more towards the 40 gallons because the more space, the better. Just make sure to give them plenty of spaces to hide because they are a little more of a secretive gecko. All right, so thank you guys for watching another video. Um, now that the skating season has stopped for a bit, you should see me a lot more on here because I'll have a lot more free time now. But as always, thank you guys for watching and we'll see you for the next video. Bye.